The biggest productivity killer is a laggy timeline. Before you even open up DaVinci, eliminate this. Blackmagic's proxy generator was actually installed when you downloaded the main program, and mass renders out temporary versions of your footage that are easier for your computer to work with. In this very old, your computer should have GPU acceleration for H.265 10 bit. If you are only working with 8 bit footage or have an old computer, H.264 or lower is okay. If you're working in Apple's ecosystem, then you can use ProRes, but it is going to use up more space. Whilst here, it's also worth running Blackmagic's disk speed check to make sure that you aren't being bottlenecked by a slow hard drive. With our renders complete, all we have to do is jump up to playback and then we can switch between the proxies and the camera originals whenever we want. This can free up a laggy timeline or it can extend the battery life of your laptop if you're working out and about. Once in your timeline, you don't want to be clicking around trying to locate your media. You want the media pool to automatically be at the clip you are working on, so you can just see the relevant clips around it. To turn this on, go to Preferences, User, Editing, and select Always Highlight Current Clip in Media Pool. Jumping between projects and timelines efficiently saves you a horrendous amount of time. First, go to Timeline View Options, then turn on Stack Timelines. You can now tab up multiple timelines and view more than one at once. You should also have Power and Smart Bins on. Power Bins are like normal asset bins, but will appear in your projects, so setting up assets that you use regularly here will save you a lot of time. Smart bins can also do very useful functions such as scanning and organizing your footage based on person, shot, or scene. But a useful one to have on all the time is automatic timeline folder so that you can quickly scan timelines even if they're spread across multiple bins or you've just lost them in your project. With timelines covered, jump down to the little home button at the bottom which is going to take you to your database overview. Make sure that you have a right click dynamic project switching turned on and then go to a second project that you want to open at the same time, open it up and at the top we can jump between our two projects here. This is really useful. For example, you can see I've already done this for this project. I want this little cutout bit here, copy it, switch over to push in the bag, which is going to be called something entirely different. And then on this timeline here, I'm just going to copy and paste this over. You can also jump between your different timelines up here, just like you can jump between your different projects up here. Being able to move around like this is just going to speed you up so much. At some point, you will accidentally delete or break part of your edit or timeline. Things will go wrong. Jump into edit, history, and then you can go back action by action until you find the point where you self-inflicted additional stress and work on your life. You can either continue from here or copy the bit from before you messed up, go back to the latest action, and then paste in the old bit to the new bit and patch it all up. At this stage, it's also worth checking that you have live save and backups turned on so that you can recover from any point regardless of what goes wrong. The main advantage of adjustment clips is that we can apply our effects over multiple clips without locking them away in compound clips, but also being able to copy and paste those adjustment clips with all their effects, meaning that we only have to do the work once. Pairing an adjustment clip with grids is super useful, saving you time aligning all your assets across all your cuts. You can then save regular used ones to your power bins by dragging them in and naming them to easily reapply to any timeline in any future project. There are loads of really useful keyboard shortcuts, but these are the bare minimum that you should be using to save time. If you want to copy my exact ones, then I have one set to fast reverse, allowing me to go backwards faster than real time, two to pause, and three to go forwards faster than real time. W gets the razor tool out, so you do your normal cuts. Q cuts start to playhead, i.e. ripple cuts backwards, and E cuts end playhead ripple cut forwards. We then have our arrow keys which take us forwards and backwards to the beginning and end of each clip or left and right gets us a frame at a time left to right. If you select clip and press shift backspace it will close it all off. Once you've got these down they're basically going to be a controllable magnetic timeline that allows you to choose when you want those kinds of effects to be running. Simple math for you if you're able to review your timeline in twice the speed then you're going to edit in half the time. D 
default transitions are super powerful for time saving. If you scroll into a transition point where you want to add something, maybe throw on a crossfade, click on it, set it up to be how you want, whatever those parameters are. I like to put a tiny little fade on every single audio cut so that it merges the background and it sounds like there was no interruption at all. You can then right click on this new transition that you've customized, create transition preset and call it whatever you want. This is then going to appear in your user list. I've already got one called chat cut. I'm going to right click on it and set a standard transition. Now what I can do is highlight all the clips that I'd like that applied to, press shift T. And if we scroll back in, you can see that every single one of the points where we have a cut now has that nice little crossfade over it so that it's really smooth. As a bonus for audio tracks, head over to the track that you're working with, select it by clicking, and then turn on voice isolation to a lowish amount, around 20 is great, and switch on dialogue leveler to optimize moderate levels. Now when you watch it play, watch the audio track. We have audio track one here, which matches with audio one track here, and make sure that your peaks are coming out roughly around negative five to negative 10. And that's going to make sure that you have all your background noise cut out, your audio is balanced throughout, so you don't have different bits at different volume levels, and you are hitting the nice loud peaks that we want so that it comes out nice and clear and crisp on YouTube. You've done all that with just a few clicks. I've got a quick one for color grading. This is something that a lot of people just seem to miss, but it just speeds things up. You can either use local grades or remote grades when grading your clips. Global means that when you are editing a clip, anything else, any cuts you made, as long as it is the same clip, it will also apply it to those clips. If you're on local grades, it will only do the individual one that you are specifically on. We can use both. I like to grade first with global. Once you've done your speed grade so that all your individual cuts are graded very similar, you can then copy your remote grades to local and then right click again and use local grades. And then all your clips will be in that place where you're super happy, the grade's done, but you can then individually tweak each one to be exactly how you want and it's not going to affect the rest of them. Another little hidden thing people don't seem to notice even though it's in plain sight is Lightbox. If you click on it, you can see all all the clips on your timeline which enables you to see which ones perhaps have been graded a little bit different which ones aren't matching the theme of your overall video our goal when we're editing is to not be on the computer when it is working. One of the things that's really gonna help with that is making sure that you have the ability to do things like automatically upload to YouTube on the back of your render. You can do this with many different platforms, but if you go to DaVinci Resolve, Preferences, and down to System Internet Accounts, you can sign in to all your different accounts, which is going to enable you to set those as places to automatically upload so that whilst you're having your break, you're out on your walk, your computer's doing all the work for you, it's both rendering and then uploading so when you come back, everything is just ready to go. A massive time saver that I've recently discovered is based around the auto generation of text and dialogue from your video. I throw in a existing render, control all, control C. We can then ask ChatGPT to summarize it. There's loads of different ways you can use ChatGPT to assist you on this kind of stuff, but this is a DaVinci Resolve video. So I will let you play and work out how you can get the best results for whatever it is you want, whether that's SEO, providing summary notes in a course, or just descriptions for your videos so people know what they're watching. For my bonus tip, I'm going to let you in on a secret. I extracted my proxies, then uploaded them to the CS Boost team who used DaVinci Resolve's cloud server to plug directly into my workflow and then edit for me. The only way to scale your time is to have an efficient team. If you want one that's ready to go and can edit videos like this, check out Creative Shortcut. See you soon.